US Mexico border. The question, is Mexico safe, is usually exclaimed by those who would never dare to step outside the bubble wrap of central colonial towns. Have you ever stopped to think that Mexico has more to offer? I've spent a considerable amount of time in the north, in Sinaloa, Durango, Coahuila, and Chihuahua, having had a taste of the latter last year. Today, I am in Ciudad Juarez, a frontier city on the Mexico-US border, neighboring El Paso, Texas. Forget everything you've ever heard. What you're about to witness is just how fascinating, friendly, and lively a Mexican border city can be. Urban Mexico is the chapter of the Mexico book you never read. Good morning and welcome to another Mexico video and welcome to Ciudad Juarez in Estado de Chihuahua. For those of you that are in the know, Ciudad Juarez is a very large city so I could quite possibly film about five videos here but I only have time for one so I've selected certain things that I want to include in this video and we're heading towards the first one. I'm staying in an area called Nogales, it's a residential area quite far away from here. I've walked all the way down here on this bright and sunny Sunday morning and I'm going to give you some impressions of Juarez throughout this video, show you some things that you could possibly do and see because, you know, let's face it, Juarez is the type of place in Mexico that foreigners don't generally come to or film videos in. So on that note, let's get going. So Juarez is a border city between Mexico and the US. The last time I was in a border city was 17 years ago in Tijuana. So it's great to be back in one again, obviously border cities anywhere, particularly between Mexico and the US, come with certain issues such as immigration issues, drug trafficking historically, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to see what there is to do in Juarez. As a tourist, I can see the US right ahead of me. Amazing. Um, you know, it, it does feel weird being in this area of Mexico because, you know, we are so close to the US, so you do see a combination of Chihuahua license plates and Texas license plates, because obviously a lot of people do come across back and forth across the border every day, like a lot, like thousands. Uh, <laughs> and um, we're heading to our first spot, which is right ahead of me. It's La Equis, the X. Okay, there's a Chihuahua plate there. Mountains in the distance, all over the place. I love this area of Mexico or anywhere in the north. You know, it's just so different from south central colonial architecture world, you know? Well, look, there's Texas over there, y'all. El Paso. The Ciudad Juarez used to be called El Paso del Norte, the pass to the north, when they were discovering this region of the world. But this is what we're here to see. It might not look like much, but it's a ginormous X. Wow, close up, it's ginormous. I wasn't expecting anything less. The uh, Rio Bravo is over there, which is the frontier between Mexico and the US. And you can see the uh, high border wall there, lovely. I can't believe this, look, <laughs> it's the US. Oh yeah, as well as this being called La Equis, the X, it's also called um, Monumento a la Mexicanidad. And it was built by a guy called Enrique Caballal Gonzalez, which, who, rather, has been a feature of past Mexico videos, believe it or not. Can you remember where? So where southern and central Mexico has that wonderful colonial architecture, this type of red sculpture very much personifies urban Mexico for me because we've seen it before in Ciudad Neza, in Estado de Mexico, in Chimalhuacan, in Torreón, in Cahuila. They're all designed by the same guy, Enrique Caballal Gonzalez, or otherwise known as Sebastian. Um, I love it. It's ginormous. You know, th this red color is so intrinsic, that's the word, isn't it, of these types of urban areas. It really represents, 
you know, urban life in Mexico. And I've read, as always, numerous stories behind what the meaning of this is. Number one, it's meant to um, commemorate people that have died in drug wars. Number two, it's um, an Aztec flower that signifies new life and the beginning of everything. And also it's um, meant to show, you know, the, the mix of cultures between indigenous cultures, Spanish, also we're right near the US as well. So whatever the meaning is, I don't really care. It looks cool. Ginormous X. And believe it or not, you may have seen some of Enrique Caballal's work, no matter where you are in the world, because he's designed sculptures, not only in Mexico, but everywhere. Argentina, Brazil, Switzerland, Ireland, Japan. He's world renowned. Sebastian, 2013, that's when it was built. While I'm up here, it's the perfect time to highlight this. Shush. Yeah, over the years from being in Mexico, from speaking to Mexicans, from knowing Mexicans, from getting YouTube comments from Mexicans, I've always felt that there's been this overwhelming sense of inferiority and insecurity and feeling lesser than others just because you're from Mexico. Of course, we've got the border with the US right over there, the land of freedom and opportunity, whatever. Um, but I'll tell you what it is. It's bullshit because this sculpture is proof alone that Mexicans do have an impact across the world. You know, these sculptures are everywhere. Um, Mexicans are not the people that just climb over border walls smuggling drugs and people into the US, believe it or not. You know, get with the times, Donald Trump. It's not 2017. I can't get over this. This, <laughs> this might be uh, bizarre for anyone from this area of Mexico or from El Paso, and you see it every day. But you know, we've got typical Mexican signs behind me. In the distance, you've got those classic US street signs, east, west, with the route numbers and El Paso water. Yeah, I do feel like here, I do have a bilingual problem. Not that I'm really bilingual, but yesterday I said something like, normalmente me gusta gatos. Normally I like cats, but I like your dogs. I find, you know, sentences I'm saying to some people, half of it's in Spanish, half of it's in English. And it kind of very much sums up this area because of course borders, you know, just because there's a geographical political border doesn't mean that everything miraculously changes. There is this absolute mix of language and culture. It isn't just a cut and dry, black and white kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Right down there, next to the X, there's some sort of peaceful demonstration. It's about um, investment in things like education and security. On the subject of safety, a lot of people have said to me, David, why are you going to Juarez? <sighs> probably four years ago, I probably wouldn't have come here, but after all these years, I think I'm more than equipped. And, you know, what do you think a border is going to be like? You know, like the ghetto or something? Um, but there are normal buildings. There are children's playgrounds. There are people going for runs and bike rides on a Sunday morning. And another building, the Biblioteca Central, with again, some interesting sculptures outside the front. And speaking of books, I don't know if you can see, where is it? There's a sign like written into the hillside right over there. I'll try and get some drone shots of it later. La Biblia es la verdad. The Bible is the truth. There's a little family over there having a little birthday celebration. I think a three-year-old with balloons. So I'm in Parque Chamisal next to this highway with a kiosk. Um, someone did tell me it used to be really nice and that now it's shit. Um, we will see. Yeah, according to Google Maps, um, this path that I've walked up is the entrance to the, like, the main park bit. I haven't seen any corpses or crack holes. So that's a plus, there is a pile of tires. <whistles> Hello angels. This is classic me. Try and find a park, end up in a junkyard. Here is the park, brilliant. Reminds of that children's playground from Terminator 2. You know, when Sarah Connor is like on the wire fence. Praise the Lord, this is what I was looking for, the Museo de Archeologica de El Chamizal. As you can see, all the other visitors are from Juarez, except me. <laughs> I haven't been in London in years. Why did I put that on there? This place seems to be free. There's a little museum bit with uh, artwork and artifacts, things like that. And then you've got this bit, which I thought I could walk down into, but it turns out it's just like a dried up pond. Um, with like an Aztec calendar stone in the middle. So honestly, this seems a bit like a sort of children's museum replica sort of place um, to learn about prehistory in this region of Mexico, which honestly I don't know much about. Um, I've read more about, however, the Mexican Revolution and the fact that Francisco Marrero planned uh, the revolution effectively in a little house right near the border. 
which is a bit further to the northeast. And also Juarez, of course, is named after Benito Juarez. Right, we're back on the road again. And this ain't the fucking history channel, is it? We're going back to doing what I do best, exploring urban Mexican towns and cities to sort of break Oxo for a Hershey's and a Fresca. We're heading towards Centro, and I'm actually, shockingly, gonna be meeting someone there. This is so exciting, because I think that's the bridge over there going over to Texas. El Paso Electric. Um, we have Guatemoc. That's giving me nightmares of Pizza de los Arcos. Right near the border, there's an old plane. Ah, Biblio Avion. Is it like a library on a plane? Um, for travel, it's better to have a book, I think it says on the side. I don't know how you get in. There doesn't seem to be an entrance. Look at that border wall over there. We are right next to it. Here's the express line to head across the border into Texas. It's not very busy at the moment. Maybe the non-express line is uh, busier, I don't know. It is Sunday as well, so I don't know how many people will cross over on Sunday. Off they go, back to Texas with their Texas plate. Now I think there are 31 border crossings. I've read that the one here in Juarez is more of the friend, one of the friendlier ones, I mean. Like, it's not exactly difficult to get across the border. You just have to pay a little bit of money. There's nothing coming. I don't know whether this is actually in operation. So I haven't done any research about the central area on purpose because I actually want to be shocked and surprised like a tangerine. Is it going to be colonial or is it going to be like Torreon or Chihuahua? You know, with this more sort of modern 60s, 70s, um, modern sort of American look. Okay, as expected. It's like Chihuahua or Torreon. And that bar over there is extremely famous. We are gonna to touch on that a little bit later. Remember the um, express line? Uh, well, it's a different story at the regular one. Puente Internacional Paso del Norte. Yeah, here we go. So it's either Cinco Pesos and Pesos Mexicana or 30 cents in US dollars. It seems rather simple to cross the border, which is quite honestly surprising, considering when you think the amount of people that talk about worldwide, you know, Mexicans moving into America to steal Americans' jobs, um, when you can just literally walk across with five pesos, or vice versa. Okay, I'm gonna get some churros from the churros guy. 20 pesos or one dollar. Okay, gracias amigo. Gracias. I have churros, churros <laughs> in Ciudad Juarez. There's the sign up there, Bienvenidos. Tintan, isn't he a musician or something? I'm sure someone told me about him. I'm getting definite Montreal vibes here with the street art. Remember Boulevard Saint Laurent? Wow! Who knew Ciudad Juarez would be top tier? Well, I kind of did. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, if you're a Mexican, do you honestly want to move to the US? Because my past experience and that big long line to get into the US, being all Texas license place, is indicative of the whole expat thing. You know, coming to Mexico to exploit Mexico for its lower cost of living, etc. But have I ever met a Mexican that genuinely wants to move to the US? I don't think I have. Waking up, feeling the taste of our fight last night. Breaking up, making a mess of an all good life. And now that you're gone. Thinking about 
US border city, but it's still unmistakably, mistakably, Mexico. <laughs> is that a shop for um, quinceañeras, quinceañeras, whatever the word is, the party girls have when they're 15? Now I'm back in what seems to be another Cordoba, Matamoros, Cahuila, or any pretty much average city in Mexico. Okay, I just got Wi Fi for the first time and discovered that the friend I was gonna meet can't come <laughs> so forget that we'll look at the cathedral instead brilliant that's interesting it's a very modern cathedral um, I'm not sure whether you know because that bit is sort of old colonial and traditional yet that bit is like something out of the 70s it reminds me of um, Cosmo Vitral in Toluca it's de Mexico that huge place with the stained glass so that's interesting it's like an amalgamation of old and new in that cathedral Okay, I'm going to take back what I said about expat gringos because I think I've seen about two white English-speaking Americans since I've been here, plus me. Um, it seems like it's, uh, you know, mainly Mexican slash Mexican-Americans that live in Texas, El Paso, that come here for whatever reason. You know, I'm sure one reason is that it's cheaper. I swear, Centro Sierra Juarez is like someone had an orgasm and splurged everywhere colour, people, food, souvenirs and general absolute madness my senses are completely overloaded cocktails de fruta ok, necesito efectivo porque quiero comida tengo hambre who the fuck is Patrick? I keep seeing his name daubed on these concrete thingies there's a tourist bus can you believe it? You know, some people think Ciudad Juarez is just drugs and people trafficking and illegal immigrants, but no, it's a touristy place. You know, it's a good day in Mexico when I've gone through about five power raids in one day. It's boiling. Um, I've got to say, I'm really enjoying Ciudad Juarez. You'll notice I'm not banging on about history because I said it's not the History Channel. I'm putting some interesting links down in the description below if you want to read more about the history of Juarez the revolution there is a revolution museum as well i might go there on a day when i'm not filming um you know so this video isn't about history it's about exploring and discovering a city which so many people talk shit about and actually discovering that it's fucking top tier i love it i could walk around that central area all day it's not tacky it's fun it's lively af i love it what is it's brilliant Oh, I should have done that bit this way round. The lighting's better. Okay, I've got 7% battery left. Hello to the guy that just recognised from YouTube outside. Um, I'm in a burrito place. Um, there's the menu up there. I'm just going simple and having frijoles y queso because that's what I want. Perfecto. Gracias. Okay, unfortunately, my battery's gone on my regular camera, so it's back old school with a phone. So we have a burrito. Obviously, uh, we're north of the tortilla line. Therefore, we have... Arena is back, <laughs> so no more corn tortillas. As I said, it's just a simple um, frijoles y queso. Look at all that frijoles with um, queso in there. I also have, of course, the obligatory salsas. Let's tuck in. Okay, this isn't ideal. I've got my phone balanced on like a continent thingy, but you've got to use what you can find, right? <laughs> Jesus, it's very caliente, mucho color even. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. Mm. I forgot the salsa. 
I know it's a bit basic, bitch. Frijoles and queso. Um, and I'm sure there are plenty of much better places than this um, little place in Juarez. But, of course, you know, we've got plenty more time in northern Mexico. We'll have some better ones. But, you know, it's not bad. It's nothing to write home about, but it does fill a hole. I can't get used to this doing this with my phone. Anyway, um, I think we established last year in Mazatlan and Culiacan that flour tortillas are not for me. I'm a corn person. I'm sorry, but I am and I always will be. Flour tortillas, they're kind of tasteless and bland for me, but I appreciate that in northern Mexico they are a thing. I know... You know, part of that is because of, you know, the desert landscape. You can't really grow corn in a desert, apparently. Um, and, you know, tradition, you know. Arena is north of the, the tortilla line. Should we go to that bar? Because I'm right outside it. There is copyrighted music, but I'm sure we can find a way around it. Okay, I have to apologise for the terrible angle and the terrible filming quality. <laughs> but here we are. This is a margarita. Salud. <laughs> This place, the Kentucky Cub and Grill, since 1920, is fascinating. I've been reading about it, right? So basically, prohibition in the 1920s in the US, the you know the ban on transportation, importation, it was our word, sale of alcohol in the US, meant that a distillery in Kentucky decided to set up a bar in Mexico, like literally five minutes walk from the border, so that they could get around like a loophole in terms of drinking. Um, so yeah, here we are, Margarita. Mm. Oh my god. Ah, I forgot, Margaritas are strong. Dios mio. Um, and the bar inside, so cool. And you can really have a sense of, you know, the age and the history. Because underneath the bar, there's like this trough thing, like for pigs. Um, <laughs> but no, it's for humans. So that, you know, back in the day, drunk people could literally I think like piss in the trough, they would <laughs> spill their drinks and stuff, fag ash, you know. Um, it's a real cool part of history and you know, prohibition, you know, that's actually one thing I remember learning about at school. Bugsy Malone, was that a thing? Um, we did like a Bugsy Malone play and you know, learned about prohibition and stuff. Um, and you know, to actually be somewhere to experience a bit of that history is really cool. Cheers. Take a little sip, David. And also, I forgot to mention, as I have a fag and me margarita, um, supposedly this is the origin of the margarita. Um, I don't know if that's true. As always, you have to take these things with a pinch of salt, um, or whatever that is, sugar on the top. Um, uh, yeah, because it might bollocks, but <laughs> whatever. Um, I'm in the place where margaritas were born. Okay, I've left the bar. I was going to go to Casa de Abode, the place with the... Uh, where the Mexican Revolution was planned. A, it's seven kilometres away. B, I think it's closed. And C, I'm drunk. I'm just on the way home. I love this area. I mean, it's a little bit shitty um, and shady, the area I was just walking through. But look, I love the lettering on that. Uh, tortilleria and Bonito del Negro and Lavanderia. It's classic. And then down here, you know, obviously it's Sunday, so all of these shops are closed. But just look, it looks so sort of retro and dilapidated in a nice way. Um, this is a sort of thing I love about Mexico and places in general, you know? I really wish my camera hadn't run out of battery. Okay, I'm home. Let's see if I've got a tan from today. Oh yes, I have. Okay, some of that was from before, to be honest, but whatever. Um, I was going to say, if you are new, you're probably realising after watching this video that this channel is pretty much the mirror universe of usual Mexico travel videos. You know, colonial towns in the south, retiring at 23 in San Miguel de Allende. I would rather have open heart surgery without anaesthesia. This is a sort of place, Juarez, that really sets me alight and the magic comes back every time. You know, I really would put Juarez up there with other northern Mexico locations such as Torreon, Durango, Culiacan, Chihuahua, you name it. It's really absolute top tier and exactly what I look for in travel. Juarez is fascinating. It's interesting. It's just amazing. It's so unique and different. The history is wonderful. Remember to check the links out in the description below. Um, and what the great thing is, I'm here for a few more days so I can do some other things um, in my own time. Um, like walk down in Sohentes, just looking around with my eyes and seeing buildings dating back from the 30s and 40s that, you know, I must admit, they're all smashed up and blown up. But I think if they had some investment, it could really turn Juarez into an absolute, even more than top tier than it already is destination. So I've really enjoyed Juarez. Love it. Next time, as I said, we'll be in El Paso. 
brilliant. We're heading to another country, the US. Um, let's go to Costco. Maybe not. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that. Um, Juarez, top tier. Thank you very much. See you next time. Catch you later. Now that I've found